Welcome to Unlocking Academic English Vocabulary. Throughout this lesson series, we will be learning how to employ effective study habits to learn the meanings of greater numbers of words by recognizing common patterns in word structure. In other words, much of this lesson series will be dedicated to learning about the origins of common modern words originally derived from ancient Greek, Latin, and Old English languages. If you are an English learner engaged in self-learning, to prepare for various English exams, that is IELTS, and feel overwhelmed by the high volume of unknown words found in complicated texts, this lesson series is intended for you. This is a lesson series that comprises numerous lessons that will be divided into four parts. Part 1, Introduction and Strategies to Learning Vocabulary. In this lesson, we are introduced to the lesson series. What's more, we will outline ways in which we can improve our study habits to become more effective language learners. Part 2, Breaking Down Words into Their Constituent Parts. This part of the lesson series will comprise of several lessons in which we focus on the structure of words, what are common root words, and how they can be modified by means of prefixes and suffixes. Part 3 is the academic word list. There are a variety of word lists published online that teachers and students can refer to throughout their language study as a means of measuring their vocabulary knowledge. For our purposes, which is studying English for exams, we will focus on the academic word list, what it is, how it came to be, and what it contains. Part 4, English for Exams. In the final part of our series, you will learn how you can assess your English level using the Common European Framework Reference for Languages, or CEFR for short, in order to set manageable learning goals for yourself in the future. So let's begin with Lesson 1, 10 Tips for Developing Your Vocabulary. Now that we've been introduced to the lesson series, let's go over the remainder of the points to be covered in this lesson. Here are the 10 tips for developing your vocabulary. Number one, follow a course book. Number two, practice active learning. Number three, keep notebooks. Number four, make word lists. Number five, make mind maps. Number six, Use an electronic translator and bilingual dictionary. Number seven, use an electronic monolingual dictionary. Number eight, make detailed notes. Number nine, use flashcards and other learning apps. And number 10, notice patterns. The first tip, follow a course book. It should be very obvious. Yet, sometimes it can be overlooked by language learning students who are taking courses at school. Using additional course books for self-study will allow you to learn what you want and need at your own pace. When we combine sources of information together, that is using more than one course book, we are able to get a more well-rounded understanding of the material. Look for course books that are graded that is, follow a comprehensive path from beginner to advanced, containing exercises and answers. Tip 2. Practice active learning. Active learning means engaging more with the learning material. If you are reading texts, use a highlighter pen to highlight key information. Use post-it notes as bookmarks and convenient places to make annotations. Pay attention to the information presented in the table of contents. Go over the information in the book appendices. Preview and review each chapter's introduction and summary information, both before and after reading the chapter. Engaging with your study material in this way is like leaving a record of what you were thinking about during your study, which may be useful at a later time when you need to retrieve the information quickly. This will become increasingly important 
as you approach the upper intermediate levels of your language study when you need to be learning more in less time. Tip three, keep a notebook. When you sit down to have a class or studying session, keep a notebook handy to record any new words you encounter. Write down words you learn as a simple list. Write down the words you learn as a simple list. Organize your notebook chronologically. That is, write down the date. Review your notes at regular intervals. That is, go back to previously dated lists and read through your notes. This will help you keep what you've learned in memory. In a separate section of your notebook, or even better, in a separate notebook, set aside pages to make topical lists. Tip four is to make lists. One recommendation is to make a section for nouns, then make a separate list for noun categories, such as nouns for clothing, nouns for food and eating, nouns for items found in the home, and so on. Make another section for other grammar words, that is, a section on verbs, categorized by regular verbs and irregular verbs. Many verbs require prepositions that are phrasal verbs to convey different meanings. For example, to look at, to look at an object, has a different meaning than look out, a warning of imminent threat. To look up is typically used to search for or make reference to something in a dictionary. When making lists of adjectives, you can consider making lists of what the adjectives describe. For example, adjectives of size, of color, of quality, and so on. Are the adjectives used positively or negatively? Do you know what is the adjective's opposite? In addition to making topical lists and chronological lists of words, you may also want to organize certain lists alphabetically. Being able to sort words out alphabetically in your mind is a tried and tested technique used by learners to memorize word spelling. The more you organize information that you're learning into meaningful categories, the easier it will be to find that information if and when you need it in the future. The work involved in the process of making lists will also help in integrating your newly learned words into your long-term memory. Tip number five is mind mapping. In addition to note-taking and list-making, mind mapping is another form of creatively organizing information visually. The great benefit of mind mapping over note-taking is that there are no rules. Mind mapping is an exercise in pre-association where one idea can connect to another. As your mind map grows, it can depict a complex and beautiful picture that can serve as a source of inspiration for you during your study. Another word for association is collocation. Collocates are words that are, eat, that are closely associated with other words. For example, the word kitchen is closely associated to the word cooking since cooking is the activity that takes place in the kitchen. We can say that they are closely collocated or associated. Synonyms, by contrast, are different words of a similar meaning. For example, dinner and supper are synonyms for an, an evening meal. Tip number six, use an electronic translator and bilingual dictionary. In recent years, electronic dictionaries and translation apps have seen great improvements in the use of search algorithms to provide accurate and relevant translations. Apple devices, Mac OS and iOS, now have built-in translation features that allow you to select any text on screen and even text and images available through OCR technology, making translations available at any time with minimal effort. There are other third-party translation apps, such as Yodao and Microsoft Translate, that are also freely available on the internet for the desktop and Android devices in China. 
Tip number seven is to use an electronic monolingual dictionary. In addition to using a bilingual dictionary, a monolingual learner's dictionary or dictionary and thesaurus can offer a wealth of more detailed information, including derivatives, synonyms, antonyms, grammar usage, word etymology, and example sentences. The Oxford English Dictionary, published by Oxford University Press, is considered to be one of the most respected dictionaries by many, and it is well implemented and supported in electronic format. Other electronic dictionaries worthy of mention are WordWeb and the Free Dictionary, which can be found online and in app stores. Tip number eight is to make detailed notes. Certain words are rich in meaning. When you record a new word, you may want to reserve some space in your notebook for information about the word, including the following. Translation, definition, derivatives, grammar usage words, synonyms and antonyms, etymology, the word origin or the root word. Tip number nine is to use flashcards and other learning apps. With your lists and notes prepared, you can now convert your notes into flashcards. The concept behind using flashcards is testing your memory. A typical flashcard would contain the word on one side of the card. On the reverse side is where you would have your reference notes. Flashcards can be reviewed at regular intervals to keep the information in mind and reviewed repeatedly to help you remember what you re what you learned previously. There are also a variety of flashcard apps and learning services available for your mobile device and computer. You may also be able to download card decks made by other users or language learning companies. Some personal recommendations that can be found in the Apple App Store or on the web include flashcards, Anki, Drops, Duolingo, and Rosetta Stone. Finally, tip number 10, notice patterns. Modern English words are an evolution of Old English, which in turn evolved from Latin and Greek. It is also an assimilation of other predominant languages, such as French and German. When learning about words, we can look to the word etymology to see how the root word is connected to other words. Finally, learn the meanings and mechanisms of prefixes and suffixes. In the next part of this lesson series, we will be taking a deep dive into unlocking prefixes, suffixes, and root words. Here are 16 important keywords introduced in this video. Take a moment to pause the video and make note of these words.